big gear garage doors that open electrically, right? No latches, no keys, and yet fully secure and absolutely flush with the body and can be opened remotely with a switch or also with an app on a phone or a tablet. So this is how I did it. Hey, 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 welcome back to my channel on building out a DIY expedition camper. This is now video number 105 in this series, starting all the way from the beginning of getting the chassis from a bare bone frame to building up the total composites camper from scratch. And of course, slowly building out the interior cabinetry framing and the rest of the plumbing and electrical systems. And of course, some of this started also recently with painting the camper. And you'll see in this video here on the building out or electrifying the opening the closing of my large gear garage doors that sometimes some of these videos will be with the hamper painted some without okay if you remember a key tenant of my whole entire build is to have a very big gear garage right which is what i have right here it's, it's about three and a half by three and a half feet so it's quite large and you know i got my step root departure angle to even gain another basically two feet to go over the spare tire carrier and of course over the bumper as well. So that's two feet of camper space. So I go from basically a 14 foot to a 16 foot camper because of that step departure angle. And because it's also 90 degrees, it's really easy to deal with. But it does make for a funky garage door. Go back to my video, you'll see how actually I made these garage doors myself. And so one of the key tents is not only have these big enough, they can fit six bikes inside, seats up, rear wheels on, but also I don't have any latches or the outside. You notice my whole entire camper is now painted, but also you notice I have nothing down the side. There's no doors, no latches, no exhaust vents, no inlet vents, no heater vents, nothing like that, no grills. It's nice and clean and so it's more fuel efficient, it's more secure, it's less issue of like insects or anything else like that getting in, transfer of heat, you know, from inside to outside and vice versa. Doors are certainly the same. These are incredibly strong. I can literally hang on these. I can hang up on one of these actuators right here. They're so strong. And the benefit of having them be on an actuator is I don't have any keys I have to carry. I can go for a bike ride and go for a paddle board, pull that gear out and simply just by my phone, hit a button and I can close or open these doors. So there's a big benefit to that. I don't have to worry about losing keys, carrying a bunch of keys around. It also makes it incredibly secure. Let me show you. Okay, so what I gotta do now is actually do some calculations that are a little bit challenging. I have to figure out when I where to mount my linear actuator on both the door, my large custom gear garage doors, and also onto my wall here. And it sounds simple enough, right? But remember, the actuator does two things. One is, of course, it extends out, and the other, of course, is also angles up as it extends out. And of course, I not just have to get the length right in both situations and be able to have that somewhat adjustable for the seals to make sure that the door is completely sealed up and water and air tight when it is closed but also the right angle when it's in the up position and also I want to make sure it's in the right position of course vertically here in and out so that it doesn't conflict with my frame and that's in a good spot on the door and then also my door it's also in a good spot that ideally it's about at that midpoint to further out I also want it to be where I can walk underneath it and I hit my head on it and get gear out of here without bumping into it. And so I've got a bunch of things I have to think about and also where the mount is here so it doesn't conflict with anything in the way here. So I need some adjustability in the mount. It needs to be in the right place and really in three dimensions and ultimately in three dimensions in two places. And then I have to have both of them because I have one on each side of the gear garage in exactly the same place. Pretty much exactly, or else we're going to get some twisting or binding up of the door, or damaging of the door, or the actuators, and so I need to account for all of those things. So it's a lot of things that I need to account for, and I got to get this right, and I have to build my own custom mount, really, on this side and also on this side here, a little different on this side over here, because I don't have a continuous wall due to my step departure angle that I'm contending with. So, a whole lot to think about. Here's my rough dimensions. I'm going to go ahead and, and do this again. So I'm going to go ahead and mark them out on both sides and let's see if I can get these glued in here because that's what it got to be. It got to be glued in so they're going to be permanent but with some adjustability in at least two dimensions. Whew, here we go. And for this it really took my favorite tools. Painter's tape, dry erase marker, a good level and a good tape measure, and some common sense and some calculations. Okay, now I'm going to go from the center line. It's much easier to go from the center line than each side. Fortunately, my center line is exactly the same from each end of these doors, so I've got that right. 
So fortunately, I've got to do math with the imperial fractions and divide that by 2. So there's my 39 and 16. Of course, trying to get a really straight edge with a dry erase marker is quite challenging. Mark that as my CL, center line. And I'm going to write down the, the measurement, 39 and 1 16th. Okay, I'll do the same thing on the other side here. So, I've got my door now pulled in where the seal should be. My trick to doing that, because it wants to sit out just a little bit naturally, is uh, to lean something against it, right? Use, use physics. I've propped something against that. So I've got that position. Now what I need to do is measure how far in I'm going to put my mounts. I got my height positioned on there. And now you get my height positioned over here on this wall and the same thing over here as well. So let's go get that done. And what works well here is to go ahead and conceptualize the position of the actuators both in their closed and open position and then take a tape measure and extend out to their open position so you can actually see the angle and by doing this I could see the angle make sure it wasn't going to conflict with anything it was in a good position and not conflict with a gear that was going to go inside there and it was going to allow most access to that gear even stuff that's mounted on the wall and then it kind of measure out and see just kind of what those angles will be and the distances. Okay now they got my measurements done I know where I'm going to put all my different pieces now what I need to do is go ahead and clean up this wall, right? And then I'm going to get it ready for gluing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe off all my measurements here, and then I'm going to put a piece of tape down after I clean this all up to create a line as to where I'm going to put this. So the piece of tape will be right up where I go against this on one side, the top side, so I can see it on the top side much easier to get down my head down here to see the bottom side. So I line up that top side, and then I can always rip that tape off once I'm, I've got this thing glued on. So I've got to mark my center line, I've got to mark my horizontal line, do the same thing on this side as well. Do the same thing on the doors, so I line those out, and that'll glue these in. And then once these are glued in, I can come back in and make my mounts. And to fast forward a little bit, here is actually making the mounts. There's some aluminum angle drilled and cut down to a certain length and drilled for those mounts from the progressive automations to simply bolt those in and also to bolt them into these 80-20 half inch by one inch tracks that effectively they're acting for me as tracks. So I can slide those mounts back and forth and also up and down on the door to get the exact positioning on exciting moment here we go garage door time yes once the mounts are installed and the actuator is installed and seemingly all the right places then it's really exciting to go and run it through its paces for the first time and then it's just a matter of making adjustments to get everything just right so everything looks really really good let me get uh, let me let's just check the level here and I used a digital level meter to determine if the actuators were at the same level and there was no binding or a little bit of stress pushing on the door to make sure they're all positioned in exactly the right place. And this worked out very well in doing this. 32.5. So we're off by one tenth of a percent of a degree. <laughs> I think that's acceptable. <laughs> I'll give let's, That definitely deserves a high five right there. That's awesome. Let's do it. Three, two, one. <laughs> and after just tweaking a little bit on the adjustments of the two actuators on this door, is it a matter of just going to do the other one? And really the key there was really getting the doors so that they were as high as they could to 90 degrees, but not beyond 90 degrees, keep a little bit of slope to them, but also that they came down really flat and level and flush with the outside of the wall. And that was a key thing I really wanted to aim for. God, it's magic. I love it. It's absolutely magic. It's, it's, it's totally cool to watch it from inside, I gotta say. Is it? Yeah, it's yeah. really... It's, it's, it's cool to watch it from outside, too. <laughs> and once getting them all perfectly aligned, it's fun just to run them through their cycles and see them all in action. Oh my God, this is great. Yeah, what a relief after lots of work trying to go ahead and design and engineer it's this great. out. It's great. I think it's a high five again. <laughs> that is so neat. That is really neat. If you ever want to build something like this, make sure you leave some adjustability in the actuator movements on each end so you can go ahead and get them just perfectly, like in this case, the door nice and smooth and outside the camper and everything moving in synchronicity between the two actuators for each door. Test, final test here after we made adjustments. We'll see how she goes. Fire it up, John. Put power on her. <laughs> I just love watching this. I just sit here and watch these things go up and down. I should be paying attention to what's going on better. Than so cool. Yeah, these do take slower than I'd like, taking about 30 seconds to fully close. Looks awesome. I mean, there's no vibration, there's no... No, the door's solid.
Now, probably the most critical test is actually getting my bikes up in there. And you can see from this image here that the garage door is actually slanted lower down than I eventually did go ahead and set it to, where it's almost at 90 degrees, making it a lot easier to get bikes in and out of the garage. Here's the garage doors, and I'm gonna, it, it's really cool these are working. It's really exciting. It's a super exciting day, and they actually went together really well. Everything as far as my tracks here for my adjustability on the inside and outside, the tracks each are adjustable in two different dimensions, so two different planes. So that way I can adjust both my height on these and also, of course, the length on these. I went with a pretty standard progressive automations linear actuator. This right here, I'll put the model information and stuff in the show notes and also down below here. But basically the exciting thing about this one is it's 330 pounds of force on each one of these. So it's 660 pounds of force. The door itself only probably needs about 40 or 50 pounds of force to actually like push it open. So it's a lot of force. But that, of course, gives me a lot of force to hold it closed. And one of the big advantages, I talked about this a long time ago in some other videos, but I'm going to talk a little more about it now. Like, why did I do an electric opening garage door instead of just a lift, right? And that would have been a lot easier and probably a little bit cheaper. And so a couple of things. One is, on the bottom here, I would have had to have a latch, right? And that latch being such a wide door, I would have, of course, wanted that bar to have a double connecting point or a triple connecting point. So I would have that. Second of all, I would have had also a key. So I would have had to kept track of a key. Along with the keys for all the under camper storage boxes, a key for the entry door, a key for the cab itself. And next thing you know is these keys just keep adding up, right? And you have keys, 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 keys for the fuel fillers and for the spare tire box and all that kind of stuff. Like next thing you know, you have like to walk around the whole, you know, chain of keys so I wanted to reduce that particularly I didn't want to have to necessarily carry a key to open these garage doors so that way I could also get gear like if I'm going to go out paddle boarding I don't necessarily have to carry a key and worry about losing it while I'm going paddle boarding if I fall in the water or same with mountain biking things like that so that's a real big benefit of these I can actually open them electronically remotely by either a switch and or also by my phone but also it gives me some added security because I don't have somebody who can pick a lot I don't worry about a lock getting frozen up in really cold wet weather and the other benefit is with no lock and it's really seamless, so it's more a little aerodynamic, but also like, you know, how can somebody even figure out how to open it? There's such a small gap between the door and the frame here all the way around. So really somebody will get in there and do anything. Plus also the ability to keep weather out is really key. I've got seals that are going to go all the way around the inside here. So this thing's going to compress against those seals. I also don't have to worry about that thermal transfer of the locking mechanism also transferred to the inside. And of course, then we still would have had to done some kind of a lift mechanism, essentially hold this up in its up position. Not a big deal. Obviously, I've got a lift mechanism with these linear actuators. Simply push a button, you can kind of adjust it to any height needed. So if there's a truck or a car or a tree parked next to me, I don't necessarily have to open up all the way. I can just go ahead and have it go to a certain portion. It'll still hold in that portion. And of course, in the closed position, this was going to hold completely sealed, right? Again, it's more force than anybody can really get anything in there to really pull and open up on. And I can adjust that closed position exactly where I want it was with the latch. Really hard to do once you get installed to adjust that position there of where it is. Where these, I have a little bit of a, a track just I can just slide it ever so slightly in or out to adjust for any kind of like the compression of the rubber bulb seals as perhaps they wear out over time and or I've got new ones on that are now more tight. Whatever it may be, I can adjust that so it's just perfect. And with the upper adjustment here and the sliding, I can actually adjust kind of this angle from top to bottom as well. And so I've got that really, so it's all just perfect right now. So it's really great. Let me show you the inside and what this looks like at the very moment. And right now you can see I get the wires just temporarily run. Of course, got to run those wires up. I have a DC fuse panel back here. I've got a wireless controller. So I got to, you know, finish wiring up all those wires. You could see basically what this looks like with the two linear actuators on each side. That one actuator opened that door just fine. And there was really no visible deflection or bending, twisting, and anything of that garage door. They are so solid really well built one was fine on one side but it's nice to of course have two just to make sure that i have a perfect seal on both sides and it's really strong and secure and by not being in the middle i have a big open garage door now to get stuff in and out and you can see over there that little actually completely clears these ones clear and the bulb still be here that'll stick out about a quarter to a half an inch on these so everything clears perfectly so they're a really great actuator i could actually hose out this whole entire inside here so you see i get good clearance here i've got just the right amount of clearance here nothing's going to touch there so really simple 
sliding mechanism. I went ahead and I glued this half inch by one inch 80-20 profile in here, made sure it's perfectly level and centered, not that that mattered a lot, but I extended all the way just because I can attach some things in here on this side. I'm stoked this is in, it's done. Now I'm gonna have one more thing to do to seal up the camper, and that is actually my pass-through door. And so I've got that almost all done, coming up video. I've got the seals all mounted, I've got it made. It also electrically slides, but vertically. And so I had to do the seals and everything so that that can work that way. And so I'll go over that in my next video, but that electrically slides up and I'm about ready to get that installed. I should look at this. And you notice it's also really, really tall in its position with a slight slope so that any rain or snow melt, snow on or anything like that, water would drain off. But it keeps this as a nice, big, secure space, incredibly well sealed. And a key reason why I wanted to electrify these as well is to make it easy to close these when they're seven feet off the ground in open position. I just got my new rubber seals in here. Everything's all sealed up, incredibly tight. And like I said, this is incredibly strong. I can push and I can pull on this. Full stainless steel, piano hinge all the way across the top. Like I said, everything is weather tight. And I really like the look of it, nice and seamless, without any locks or other things protruding out. Just a nice, seamless, smooth look. <laughs> As you can see, it's secure. There's no latches. There's no way to grip or to grab anything around here. It's all weather tight. It's incredibly strong. You can't, you can't move on this thing at all. Push a button, and it opens up. Ta-da! So I really like this nice smooth look. It's very seamless and it's clean. And of course there's no lock to contend with, no keys, and of course no strap or anything to have to pull it down and then contend with also when it's in the closed position. And I also have some other things I'm electrifying that I'll share with you as they get built out that also will not need any keys either. It'll also be electric and all will be controlled basically by an app, uh, by my phone, or also by switches. And so that simplified access into these spaces. I can also automate those things so they can automatically close, right? Or make sure they're fully sealed, of course, whenever there's you know movement of the camper, things like that. So there's a lot of things that can happen here. And you may even, well, you can't see it yet, but there's some other things that are already. Anyways, I'll, I can't wait to share more with you. And I will show more in future videos, but here you can see right here, opening this up remotely. All right, ta-da. Pretty cool, huh? So now the cool thing about it is really been to open this all basically by switch or electrically. I can pull my bike out, I can go ahead and ride off, I can hit the button and it's gonna close. I don't even have to carry a key with me, which is really cool, right? You just have that one device that you have to carry and that's really your phone. And of course I have other ways to get in that are called backups. But this thing is so strong, I can literally do pull-ups on this. Now I could have sped this up by going to shorter actuary, which would have been mounted more about here and just gone to about here, and that would have made a much, much shorter actuator, made this open and close much quicker. But I wasn't really sure exactly how much force or strength that would really create down the bottom. It really makes sure it's well sealed at the bottom. Hence why I wanted these really pulling more down, lower down. So I went with the longer actuator, so it did slow it down. Obviously that's a downside of it, but it also is a geometry equation to figure out how to make sure I get these so they have a slight angle. They're not exactly up to 90 degrees, but they open as much close to 90 degrees as possible, or it's a slight angle to let any kind of water that's on the wall, right, that turns into this now on top of this door that can shed off and shed that way instead of falling into this space here. So it's a nice sheltered space from the weather. So it was one thing, and also of course make sure that it fully seals tight and also completely flush with the outside wall. And you saw how I got that. Now it took a little bit of tweaking. I went ahead and set up basically an 80-20 frame where I could slide these linear actuators on both the door and the wall mounts here in or out. So that worked out really well. These are linear actuators by Progressive Automations, great product. These ones are actually by P66, so they are fully able to be used in a rainstorm. You can splash water on them, hose them down. They're going to be fine. And they're just 12 volt, you know, pretty basic. They need very just a few amps to operate them, and they use no amps when they're not operating. And yet they will still hold in a static position, their full weight limit. So they're going to be incredibly strong to hold these doors completely shut and sealed. You know, even painted the inside of the doors and the, the trim here to match what's on the walls here. So that's how I did my garage doors, electrically operated large gear garage doors on my Expedition Camper. 
I'm super excited to share this with you. Thanks for watching. And indeed, thank you for watching and glad I could help out. And do by all means let me know in the comments below what you thought of this as an option and any other suggestions you have. And I look forward to sharing more in my future videos. And do, of course, check out the notes on this video for discount code to some linear actuators.